Welcome to CDR. I'm sure you're familiar with the format. It happens here at Corsica. It happens all over the UK, all over the world, as far as I know. Shout out to Tony and the whole crew. Um, it's where producers come and get to hear their productions, works in progress, ideas, and, you know, communicate with each other. And also, we have talks with uh, producers, uh, and we get slightly into the craft of production. And we have with us none other than DJ I Had A Dream. <laughs> I wanted to do it like your, your sting, but I <laughs> don't think I've got it. For those who don't know uh, Ahad, he is a DJ and, and producer. He's got a residency on NTS Radio, um, but has been on Radar, Valami, a bunch of things. He runs More Time Records. He is the co-founder of No ID, which certainly paved the way for a lot of what's happening in the sort of British underground. He's the co-founder of Dialed In. He's been a curator at Boiler Room. He's launched many careers. As well, no word of a lie. I think uh, a lot of people who know what he's done behind the scenes. He's uh, an incredible workaholic powerhouse <laughs> in in the industry. Give it up, please, for <laughs> DJ. I had a dream. <laughs> so I just kind of want to start from the beginning, whether it's DJing or production. I love how like you're saying all these nice things about me, and then in the background is. <laughs> I mean, I we we'll just take that down. No, no, keep it up. You want to keep it up, yeah? It's it's <laughs> more interesting than the logic screen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just talked about it. I don't even know whether that's an insult. I take it as a compliment. Yeah, you know? I think a lot of a lot of people like when you hear that that drop. <laughs> DJ had a dream in the club. One sets the crowd off, but also you know what drums are about to come in at that time. And I don't think a lot of, a lot of uh, producers kind of have their, their sound signature, right? And that's definitely something you're known for. And uh, we're going to get into the percussion. <laughs> but um, let's start at the beginning, whether it's DJing or production, kind of what was your entry point into it? What, what made you get on the decks or get on Logic or, or, or whatever it might be? What started? What was the beginning of the journey? Uh, in terms of getting on decks, it was student radio. Um, I went to University of Surrey and uh, basically started doing a radio show on student radio um, and then started my own night there because uh, basically there was like the Bass Music Society which was quite headsy and then there was just like commercial music. It's very small, there wasn't much going on. Uh, but yeah, my first booking was... Shout out, Surrey. Yeah, Surrey, for real. There's so many good people that came out of there. There's a course called Tonmeister. Um, you know, like the Lemon Lounge lot and like all them. Uh, yeah, I studied chemistry and... Uh <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I started the night. Uh, first few nights I was like Madame X, Funky Steps, DJ Q, uh, Barely Legal, which is called Chloe Robinson now. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of my entry point into putting on parties. But when I started producing was um, in my third year of uni, I did a year abroad in Germany, and it was uh, in a place called Worms, which is spelled Worms. Right. <laughs> so I was in Worms on my own living, <laughs> like um, like f first time ever like being away and having no distractions, like living on my own. I was living like in the outhouse of this like old gra um, this old German lady. It's kind of <laughs> like it's like Fresh Prince, but like the the German German version. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the German Pakistan yeah. version. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, like, I would honestly, the job I was doing was so boring. It was analytical chemistry, so I had to do like the same exact experiment every single day. Um, and like, whilst the experiment was on, I would just go on to like um, dubstep forum, <laughs> and like, uh, it was also future garage forum as well. That started just then, where everyone was like, "How do I sound like burial?" <laughs> Is that I, 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 that actually surprised me? I didn't know that. Is that what you're trying to sound like? No, nah, I was. I mean, okay. Around that time, there was a lot of like garage that was inspiring me. It was uh, like, like uh, you know, I love garage, um, but uh, I was reading that and just just generally tutorials, and then um, YouTube tutorials. Um, I would read like Sound on Sound. Have, right. you, have you been yeah. on there? Yeah, um, they've got a lot of good information on there, um, and yeah, just just I think it was like the boredom of chemistry just like just I was like I really just need to do something else and like exercise this other part of my brain and like uh, the working day would end at 4 p.m. 
Um, so as soon as I got home, I'd just be like, right, I'm getting on Logic. And there was no distractions at all. Mm -hmm. So it was like the perfect time for me to learn. And uh, yeah, on, on, on how, the... How was those early times? Was it really frustrating? Or was it like, this is really fun? It kind of took to it quickly? No, it was frustrating. I think I started out on Ableton and it wasn't working out. And then I moved over to Logic. And yeah, just constantly just struggling. To <laughs> um, and then so I put, I put together an EP. Um, which was like a free download on SoundCloud, um, and yeah, there was it was definitely like garage inspired. There was like a, a, a JoJo sample on there, you know JoJo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was quite catchy, so I think I had like a, an ear for sampling definitely from early, um, and yeah, I think just trying to make my drums swing like garage swing was something that I was definitely trying to do. Um, and then after that, after that EP... When you say garage, garagey, like, because with the bookings that you had at your party, which I guess are kind of like UK funky, more yeah. kind of bass orientated. Yeah, I think, like, garage, funky, grime, dubstep, like, that to me was all fit into... Is similar. there people you had in mind when you were producing, like... So like I think, so like... I could get my drums like that. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, after that pe period of initially learning... Um, I'd say a formative experience for me was going to Block Festival in Minehead. Um, and uh, Roscoe was playing there, and he was giving out his essential mix, you know, on, on burnt onto a CD. Rago. And it was just like, it was, it was <laughs> I'm so glad I took one, because uh, that mix was like Roscoe, Red Light, DJ Zinc, when he was doing the crack house stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that li that was like a gateway drug for me to go to like, you know, like Funky Steps, Lil Silver, um, and just Champion, Scratcher. Um, so yeah, that, that, those were, that was the initial kind of like trying to get into drums. But yes, I, I was never really good at making melodies. So after that EP, um, weirdly, the next thing that I put out was a release, uh, a remix for Ellie Golding. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's on an like official remix? Yeah, and it's, okay. on, it's on like 2 million streams. I didn't get any money for it. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so yeah. I didn't know that. That's like, you know, like I didn't know. For me, it was like a big look. So I was like, of course I'll do it. How did that get hooked up? Um, I was talking to this guy. He was like a, he was like, I don't know, um, remix agent kind of vibe. Um, but basically, uh, you know, I sent it to him. All it was was the vocal, and then I just added drums. So it was completely like very stripped back. Um, and then they liked Wha it. What's now known as the Aha Dabi yeah, exactly, drum dub. Yeah, yeah exactly, literally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of early early point. Yeah. So um, how would you say your sound has kind of moved on from there? Because even actually saying you started off with Garage, I assumed it would already kind of be the percussive drum dub, UK funky sound. So like, how would you say it's kind of evolved? Or is it, like this guy said, <laughs> the same... Yeah, I think the same song for his whole <laughs> career. <laughs> I th I think it's the same to be honest. I don't think it's really evolved that much. I think um maybe yeah, um, additional influences like yeah, you know, coming to Boiler Room for example and like learning about Om and learning about um you know, music from Lisbon, like all the Principe lot. Yeah. Those drums getting the influence from that. Definitely he you can hear that in my first EP for more time. Like yeah, that little little Pakistani boy. That's like you know Kaduro kind of drums. Drum. Yeah, uh, I, I would say just to counter this, although I think I think w we know what he's getting at is that when I first met you, you were like, oh, I basically make UK funky, and I think there's been a revival of this sound. You know, funky's had a second wave, but I think with that has come a lot of the club influences from around the world, from. Lisbon, from South Africa, from Brazil, and it's all yeah. kind of molded into something. I think uh, you and a lot of your peers and more time and s some of the people you work with and, and put on has kind of been at the forefront of that. So I think it's unfair to say it's, just, it's the same thing, <laughs> you know. Like, it, it, there is a lot of kind of things that tie together, the club percussive music from different strands, but it's kind of hard to also pinpoint as well what it is, other than just, like, drums basically. yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's why like you know when people say oh, i say uk funky revival i don't think that's really really accurate but there's not one uh name for it and that's why like you know people can't write think pieces about it easily because there's like seven or eight genres you got a list if you're gonna <laughs> you know say it properly 
Yeah. So, but that's fine. You know what I mean? We do don't you need. Do you think it's there's a bit of a community with? Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess now a lot of the people that you presumably looked up to are your peers, and you kind of work with and collaborate with, or uh, on a sort of a l on a level with now. Yeah. So I think after that, um, uh, I released a tune, a vocal tune on a label called Four Forty. It's kind of like poppy if you if you if you hear it. But it's still got that, it's got like crazy cousins feel to it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, Make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then after that, uh, I had a release on Roscoe Kicks and Snares. So I was just gassed. That, that, that <laughs> For must me, I was like, okay, I've done, done, done it now. Like, I can retire. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That must have been a kind of full circle yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? <sighs> just... I don't know. I would have probably just tested all these guys like at that age. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like literally, I, like that first EP I'm talking about, I I burnt CDs uh, of that as well, and I used to go to the Butters raves and just give them out to people in the smoking area and stuff like that. So Ragger. yeah, yeah, like they're probably annoyed. By <laughs> you know what I mean? We're gonna get into the the beefy stuff with the production scene, but t tell us about um, forming more time. Yeah, so one thing, again, that I'm going to say as a caveat is, like, I've always had my f music mixed down from that Roscoe Kicks and Snares release onwards. Like, I'm not a good mixed sound engineer. I, like, I that's a different skill. And I think a lot of people should just try and view it as a different skill rather than trying to do it all themselves because, um, you know, writing music and getting the ideas down is one thing and getting it to sound, like mad in the club or, or, or however it's like it's a different thing so uh the roscoe kicks and snares release was mixed down by rob who runs 1087 studios where i still have a share uh i met him at sari actually through through this the uh, some party that we used to do together and then um after that um yeah that's when i met sam sam interface he he literally messaged me on um on soundcloud um because he'd heard the uh, Lady Saw drum dub, and he was like, um, cause so, so if you don't know Sam Interface, he, he used to be a dr uh, drum and bass producer back in the day. He's done tunes with DJ Dai, um, and then he was part of Just Now, which is kind of like a Trinidad-inspired duo, um, and, you know, they've done shows all over the place. And then, um, then he was called Snow, <laughs> and now he's called Sam Interface. But, yeah, he hit me up, and he was like, I really like your tunes, but I think they could sound much better in like in terms of the mix. <laughs> and I was like, yes, like this, <laughs> 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 like this is like a godsend, literally. Such yeah. a and he, cause he, so I went down to his studio in Crystal Palace, and um, he literally was just like mixing my tunes for me. I was like, literally, like I was w watching him work was insane because he's like a magician. He's got that you know ten years of experience under his belt, and drum and bass, y you know, it needs to. Sound Slap. polished, yeah, clean, yeah. yeah. Um, and so he was saying that um, I want to start a record label. Um, do you want to put this music out on my record label? Um, and then like we just realized that like we had a complementary skill set where he's quite scatty, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm qu I'm organized, but you know like so it, it just worked really well as a team. Um, so we were like, look, let's just do it together, and then that's when we started more time. Yeah. And how did you sort of start um, collecting the artists? Because he's got like yeah, Mino, big up, big up Mino inside. <laughs> Bright, Bala Bala Boys. Yeah. It's quite a broad range of, um, oh, but again, still unified by that kind of yeah. So hard to define sound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the first release was Sam featuring Fox. Uh, Sam and Zed Bias featuring Fox. So it was like a good like way to splash in, and then. Um, then my EP, and then Mina one was supposed to come out on, other on another label, but for some reason it wasn't working out, and then I was just like, oh, we'll have that straight away. I was <laughs> like, we, we'll put that out, go on, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, that was like, th that was like, that, that was like one of my favorite releases, and like, you know, it still gets an amazing reaction, uh, the Mina and Bright make money. And then, yeah, it's all just like friends, like, you know, we, we all were into the same kind of music, and it just developed from there, really. Um, and then we continued to work with the same artists again. We did an album with Bright. Um, yeah. Yeah. And basically, we started the we started the label to put out our own music, but then we just kept kept getting excited by music we were getting sent. So we were just like, let's put out. We, we had like too much music, basically. 
Yeah, well, yeah, you put out a lot since, uh, right? Um, shall we get into the um, with the same song? Shall we play one of your tunes yeah, to give a bit of context? Which one? Um, like a classic. Uh, okay, like we could play maybe play one drum dub and then play one original one. Yeah. Yeah, I think for uh, for people to get an idea of your sound and 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 why that per that person wrote that tweet. Yeah, we do the Rosalia drum dub maybe. Who Rosalia d DM'd and messaged him about how she loved. Weird she said she said if I was a DJ, I would play this tune <laughs> from Rosalia herself. This new new the new Max so that is not. I know it's well annoying, right? I've got one too. Okay. First world problems. Oh my god, this new brand new <laughs> expensive <laughs> Apple Mac laptop. So that kind of gives you an idea of he's, he's done a bunch of drum dubs, which he does as free downloads of <laughs> within one weekend. And I'm like, oh, uh, people not playing it anymore. Because every weekend there'll be someone in a club in Australia or <laughs> South Africa tagging him of one of his drum dubs being played in the club because they go off and he actually said, oh, I had to stop reposting them because it just got a bit much <laughs> like but they they go off that that dj i had a dream and that, that well i that have song. to shout out uh sarah c who is the voice of the dj i had a dream he he um done a lot of stuff with toddler t and i was on uh a radio station called nasty fm that was like my first radio show and i just said oh can you just do me like a drop like in terms of like and, and it, w it wasn't just the dj i had a dream it was like a message like oh you're listening to dj i had a dream right now so I just cut that one bit, and now it's literally just like... Um, Heard yeah. everywhere <laughs> in the rave. Shall we get into the production, or do you want to play one more tune for context? Yeah, I guess one more, just uh, off the new EP. Um, uh, and this one is... Sorry. One more. Uh, featuring an artist called Mishimo, who is also on uh, More Time Records. He's an amazing producer uh, who sent us about 100 demos. Um, he's quite isolated. He's got a visual impairment. That means he's pretty much blind at night. Um, but he's just, like, so skilled. And also, he's got great vocals, which he never even told us. So, like, when, when we heard his vocals, we were like, you should do that more. And we've got a project with him coming out later this year as well. Sick. Also another thing to mention is like there's definitely influences of like toll and like the rhythms from Pakistan that I grew up with. Like you could hear that in the Rosalia one. Yeah. Like someone said to me like the Ro Rosalia vocal sounds like a Kavali. 
yeah. like the way it's like chanted. And I think the frequencies that the doll hits. I, would, I was going to ask, because you've just gone on a trip to Pakistan, do you think that's going to influence the music that you're about to make? Yeah, we did a few field recordings as well. So. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's good to know. And the bass line is obviously inspired by Ama Piano, which is something I was listening to a lot over the last couple of years. Given the nature, I'm just taking a wild guess, but given the nature of your um, tracks uh, and the drum dubs and the percussion, I'm assuming when you start a song, do you start with the drums? Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, not always, because if, I st if, I'm, if I'm making a drum dub, then I start with the sample. Right, yeah. Um, and then just see what would complement that. But... With your own with your own tracks, like original tracks. Yeah, definitely. Um. Should we get into uh, some classic? I yeah, the dream so percussion. So, and so this is how you make. <laughs> this is how you make an had a dream drum drop. Drum drop. <laughs> really fucking easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, like you, you'll hear that like there's a lot of um, intricacies in there, um, in the drums. So I'm an Ableton user. So what's this? So this is Ultra Beat, which is um, the default um, kind of drum machine in, in Logic. Uh, any of you guys uh, familiar with it? Yeah? Do any of you use it? Yeah? You do? Okay, cool. So um, I'm just turning off all this stuff. And then you just drag a sample into here. And where do you get your drum samples from? So yeah, we, we'll, g we'll go into that as well, I think. After, ah, uh, you want to hide your secrets? No, <laughs> 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 there's, there's there's a couple of uh, uh, pointers I think I'd 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 give to someone, um, just to m make the drums a little bit more interesting. But basically, the the classic one I I, I got given this sample pack called uh, Urban Fire, and it's like, oh, should I put this on now? Because So these are just like some bamboo samples, yeah? So like I used a lot of, the, um, I made a tune called Bamboo Rhythm and uh, this was like the main element of that. I think like something worth mentioning is like a lot of, in a lot of music, the mid range might be occupied by a lot of melodies. Instead of, instead of those melodies, I I put drums there. Yeah. So they're almost like the drums are like the melody. They yeah. they they occupy that space. Um for like I'm not very good at making melodies, so <laughs> that's like yeah. When you're when you're close to the end of a track or even throughout, are you looking at the frequencies to make sure you've got everything filled like the, the Yeah, space so space? that is intrinsic to like my uh drum production. So the main couple of things that I would focus on uh so yeah with the, with with ultra beat uh it's just like any other drum machine sequencer and then you can just put in right put in things here you can already tell it sounds like one of my tunes right <laughs> 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 so like say if i did that and have, have you got a pattern you used to or you just kind of do it random i did i just did that at random right yeah um but it might you might end up getting something good out of it, but basically, 
the two, like, so this mode is the 1 over 32 mode, which allows you to be more precise and put in fills, whereas, like, if it's on this one, it's, so, like, it's not as much. So when, when I want to make the kind of more precise sounding drum fills or whatever, then I use this 1 over 32 mode. Um, and then the two things that I think are probably most important when thinking about groove and thinking about drum production is pitch. That definitely sounds <laughs> like a <laughs> DJ <laughs> 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 Straight I told you, I told you it's easy, it's easy. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, like, you know, as you said, I've used, um, I've used that as, as like a little method where whilst, uh, whilst the, the pattern is the same, I'll automate the pitch. So it's like, you know, that tune, uh, melty, it's literally just like, it's just like slowly going down. And then I'll just record that, I'll record that in. Um, so that's, that's that, and then is the other thing. Is this something you just kind of found through messing about, or is, is there a reference point of artists that you listen to that do similar techniques? There's definitely one tune that's like a big influence called Clambu. Have you heard it? Who's uh, it by? Shall I play, shall I play it? Definitely, I'm curious. Oh, yeah, you played this in our back-to-back, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll fast forward. I'm not going to listen to the whole thing. That's kind of like the ins influence for like the bamboo. And then um, this is an example of a tune which I think does the kind of, I don't even know what you call it, like modulation vibe really well. It's, it's Merlo, Mer track. Merlo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love that shit. Basically like, it's like, it's kind of all you need in the club, no? <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. it's just like silly and just, yeah. you know what I mean? Do you reference a lot of tracks when you're stepping up to your door and being like, right, how do I recreate that or how do I get something, a similar effect? Um, I, I started doing that more over the lockdown. Basically, I got sent this brief from BT Sports and it's like, we want Shout you to... Shout to BT Sports, no, <laughs> It's like we want you to make like um, you know a, a rolling and moody and like they use all these descriptors right and it's like a whole one page For like advert music brief yeah 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 um, then I was like why don't I just write myself some briefs sometimes <laughs> do you know what I mean so for yourself yeah so I started doing that like what do I want the mood to be like what are some reference tunes that would be similar um, but it's so it's not it's not copying but y it's so easy to just get lost and just like start doing something else. Um, but yeah, what I was saying about um, pitch. Uh, I, uh, I, I read this b book by Questlove about sort of creativity, and he was like the musical director for D'Angelo Voodoo, which is for me one of the greatest albums ever. And they just studied, they just sat there spending Sony's money for years watching like Al Green and Prince and just um, Sly Stone, and they would just like basically start with that as a reference point jam. And then eventually what those jams turned into ended up being voodoo. But I don't think, because you're going to intrinsically make it your, your own anyway by doing, because you're not going to exactly do it. It's just having a reference point or a sort of starting idea. I don't think, it, I personally don't think it's copying, which is Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's point. like, you know, when like Scream and that were trying to make horsepower productions and then made dubstep sounds, right? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so... I think like yeah, pitch is really important when it comes to each each drum hit, um, because it's just ha like how they work together. Um, so let me open another one. Uh, oh, you're gonna open actually one of the. No, just just uh, I mean I could uh, uh, I can open up the project next, but I think it's good to just give a simple overview of like yeah. the pro process of of like um, 
the way I make drums. Um, so what I want to try and demonstrate is So say we got that. I think, I don't know um, how many people do this, but do, does, does everyone pitch their drums like as, as, as like a priority, as like one of the first things you do? Yeah. Because I think it can just make such a difference as to like where it's hitting in, in terms of like, say you wanted to hit, hit, hit you in the chest, right? And, there's and, and just like playing with that, always and just like adjusting it at all times and I find that ultra beat is a really easy way of doing that um, and then another thing that I think really informs the groove is the envelope so like the attack the release all of that stuff and and something that I use for that uh, is also just the built-in built-in logic enveloper um, so say I just want I want the kick to just be a bit longer for example I'll just put the envelope on it I don't know if you can really hear it that well but you kind of get what I'm getting at right yeah so I think I think um I would say one thing because we actually got in the studio to make a track together a few few weeks ago I I definitely don't think about it as much as you. Uh, of that session, I think you spent half an hour on the kick, tr <laughs> transient shaping, enveloper. I'm like, the kick's fine. You're like, no, it's not fine. We've got to refine this kick. And yeah. uh, like, y you spent so long on just the sound design of the of, of, of the single hit. I was I was actually quite shocked at how long you... S I'm like, really? Yeah, I, think I it's like, like I think it's a mate, the it's kicks, a, it's but like that's why your drums bang and mine probably don't. So <laughs> like, <laughs> I think I think it's like a fine balance because you can literally end up spending like a whole night on that, right? Yeah. Um, and again, I think you should just, th in terms of like the mix down process, um, it's good to just be like, look, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have a mix down engineer that you trust and you can actually go like like all the ones I'm talking about, I've done assisted sessions with them. So I've sat with them and been like, no, I want a bit more of this, a bit more of that. And um, I think that can take a tune. Not none of my tunes before they were mixed down, like, look good enough. You know what I mean? So um, I think there's a fine balance. But I think when it comes to the envelope as in and, and, and the, the pitch, that's two things that I always really pay a lot of attention to when it comes to making drums. Yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah I definitely kind of was watching you working and being like, Wow, this guy really cares about that drum sound, <laughs> which which you know is fair enough. And it's yeah. So what's I guess like one of the tunes that uh, I played earlier, the the rainfall one. Um, I can go into the the project of that. Should we do that? Yeah. So basically, how it started off was uh, this this project here. It's called One Sixty. Let's go, baby. Because <laughs> it was like it was, was like it originally One Sixty yeah, BPM. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, See I'd, this I'd, lo I'd love to hear you make jungle actually. <laughs> so this one's still 160. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Fucking mad. I need to maybe release like a 160 version. change the pattern for like a 160 yeah you just spit sped it up basically you've just done a normal thing is though that that might be like me being a bit shook that like i shouldn't you know yeah, let's see what we're this is the 160 version it's got a <laughs> footwork vibe yeah yeah exactly the thing is i don't release this kind of music so i'm just like there's a part of me that maybe gets scared of, of like branching out in a way, that was another thing we discussed in the uh, in 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 our session together about how you're kind of known for one thing, and you're slightly nervous about deviating from that, yeah. which I find mad. But wh why is that? I don't know. I mean, 
maybe uh, maybe like for so say like there's like four tunes that I haven't I don't put out that much music right I put out an EP this year I put one out like <laughs> maybe a couple of years ago and then I do the drum dubs or whatever but if, if you've waited like a year for a year for an EP <laughs> of me and you want to play them tunes then maybe you're gonna want them to be like wh almost not what you expect but the style that you expect but if, say if I did like a longer project like an album then um, I would definitely like branch out and do other stuff. So you're almost happy to be pigeonholed. I don't. I don't know. If it's pigeonhole in the. <laughs> Let's just go back to the tweet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I think you should you should branch out, but maybe we, we we just need to hear the album. Yeah. Maybe that's that's the that's the calling card. So then then I just thought right. Let me slow that down. And how was it wor um, working with the collaboration? You just send stuff over, because you you also um, you like collaborate on uh, in lockdown over over like Zoom with Skrillex and stuff, right? Yeah, I did a little bit of that. A <laughs> little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> you made Skrillex. No, so basically that that was that was a funny story because we we just had a long Zoom call. Um, so I, m I met him a couple of years ago um, at Dance Systems party because they were going back to back. And then he was just following me, and then on Christmas Eve in 2020, or or 20, yeah, it must have been. It was in lockdown, I'm for yeah. sure. Yeah. He was just like, do you, do you want to do Zoom call? And then we, we just got we just got talking. <laughs> Christmas for Eve. For a while. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were talking for ages. I was just asking like about you know his entry points to music, like what he get, what he likes, and just general stuff. Then he was just like, oh, are you working on anything right now? Um, and then I, went, I started going through some of my ide ideas, and then he was like, "I'll oh, send me that one." He opened it up, and then there and then, just put it into Ableton and started working on it. And that while you were on the call with him, yeah, I think I, watching him work was w actually sick as well, because like the way he, he didn't need the stems, because mm. he's and that's another. W it's like you want you're thinking quickly and you're you're getting your ideas are down quickly. It doesn't matter if it's like perfect or if you got the stems or whatever. Um, another thing he did was like um, just re record. Uh, so so we, we were in studio together, and there was a vocalist as well, and w and they were just talking. Um, and he he just uh, like just recorded on his iPhone <laughs> the person talking, and ended up putting it on the record. Right. And then another thing I think that that's great. He looks like he's got a crazy workflow. Yeah. I've kind of watched videos online. And yeah. Like like. When I first got to studio, he was literally just playing guitar for hours and hours and hours, just not not hours, but like <laughs> ages, <laughs> just like and recording it all. And there's gonna be like one tiny bit in there that he likes, and he'll use that. So 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 what he always said to me is like, there's no mistakes. So if you're doing something, if you if you've got a vocal take or if you're putting something down, there's no mistakes. Just keep doing it. Make make the loop really really long, and maybe you'll come back to it, and there'll be some little bit of magic. Um, in there. Um, and, and how has this collaboration worked out? Was it you sending so stems? Or this or this was very much like the tune was ready to go, and I was like, I'd love a vocal from Michi. Okay, yeah. so it's more the vocal element yeah, that you yeah. contribute to. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where I got this from. <laughs> I know that's not very useful, but let's just like maybe listen to it layer by layer. So this is one. So that that was using the. The sequencer you showed before. Yeah, yeah. So this was using the ultra beat, and then I bounced it out as audio. And then this is the next one. So th it's basically just a layer. Yeah. Different pitching. Yeah, but so important for the texture. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's like for me. That's like. I think the inspiration is is, is tall. Like there's so many nice textures that you get. Um, so that's the kind of main groove now. Yeah. Um, and let's see. I really like this sound. So I think I th um, it would have been shorter, but I, I I think I stretched it out. But it's nice. It's a nice like. It's a nice like. Um, just gives you a warning that something's coming in. Yeah, almost like a riser. But Exa ex exactly. Yeah, but it also sounds like like a chart, like, like
like a child in <laughs> in the distance or something. I think like uh, like gi gi given given your tunes like a human element, like always 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 elevate elevates them. Mm. Like even if it's just like a small vocal sample. Yeah. Um, Okay, so this is another classic thing that I always do. Is like, you know, so you got the kick, and then just something kind of off it. Like this, yeah. this groove is basically in all of the drum dubs. Um, this is very much a UK funky pattern, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. And also just house, I think, as well. Like, yeah. there's a lot of house music with this in it, right? But then I switched it up a little bit. But where when I was talking about the pitch, um, these two I think may be the most important. Uh, it hits the pitch of the yeah, uh, exactly the tom or whatever. Yeah, it hits the, the middle. The way the the way the kick and the tom are pitched against each other. Yeah, will gi will like give you your groove pretty much, and then and then this this additional. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this percussion layer is base is is just one of these, but just like offset a little bit. Um, so just just as a workflow process, do you try and bounce to audio as quickly as possible, commit, and then move uh, on? I don't think there's any. I haven't I haven't got any hard and fast rules with that. To be okay. honest, yeah. and then. Okay, yeah, this another another signature thing that I always do is um, have like a like a big clap. Like lot of reverb. Yeah, so a big clap with a lot of reverb on it. O o always usually placed on that on that one last one. Yeah, if that makes sense. Um, always placed where sir? So it's like uh, just just before the next bar here. Right. Um, so and, and that again I think is like a UK it's funky like type thing. Uh, almost assign as into the next sec yeah. section. Yeah. So then um, the bass line, I think, was a log drum. Def definite ammo piano vibe. 100% def ammo piano vibes. <laughs> but maybe a bit more like, so I put uh, some distortion on there. And then... Um, what, what distortion plug-in to use? Decapitator, I think that's quite a commonly used one. It's with comes with sound sound toys, um, but one of my favourite plugins is this. Uh, it's called CLA. Uh, it's part of the Waves package. I, I end up putting it on almost everything. Um, it's kind of just got it's got everything in it. So it's got um, like a compressor. Uh, you can make it sound. It's just like all in one kind of thing. Yeah. Beefs it up. It's just it might be it might just be quite like a workflow thing. I've just got I've just gotten really used to it. It's it's like um there's like a few things there you can do yeah. pretty pretty quickly. Um what other elements are there in this? Trap bass. <laughs> nice. That's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. More cowbell. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so with um, Ultra Beat, the, um, the pattern, do you always just draw it in? Do you ever sort of like actually get on a, yeah. a trigger or a keyboard and actually tap out? Mostly, just, mostly just draw them in. Draw it in. Okay. And is it like a sort of trial and error, or, or, or is there sort of a particular kind of patterns and rhythms that you I know, think like know like and stick to? There would have been an element of randomness to this first one. And then, same way, you know how I was saying, like with the drum dubs, I start with the sample. This would be the equivalent of that sample, and I'd build everything else around that. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't even know if the vocal's in here. Let me see. I actually don't think it is. I know you've uh, done 
remixes with um, maybe turn it down there because that turns our mic down as well. Oh, no, it's, it's the gain of that. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. Sorry. Sorry about that. I was doing it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you've, uh, uh, like, remix, you know, officially Ellie Goulding and unofficially, like, Rosalia, but what what what's your, what was it like kind of working with... Have you worked much with, with vocalists, actually? Um, actually, no. Like, I've got one tune, um, which is with David Got Sound, and it was already an instrumental, and I sent it over to him, and then, yeah, uh, he just did the verse. But I have, like... Um, help to record uh, a lot of vocalists like Toya De Lazy who's from South Africa. She yeah. yeah, so we had like a um, Mishi Mishimo beat and we wanted to get Toya on it and so me and Sam sat with her in the studio and just gave input. Like I, I know how I like things to be structured and how they're gonna work in a club. So I think that input can be useful. Um we me and Hannah did the same with like Moonchild Sonelli on a Mishimo beat. Um, so yeah, that I, I, I've done that, but like, I'm just like, again, it goes back into what we were saying, like, um, what, like what kind of vocals do you think would work with my beats? Like they're so busy. So it would almost be just a se separate thing. Like I would happily produce for a vocalist and have it be their project. Yeah. Produce Str strip it back a, a bit. Yeah. Some people, some vocalists might get off on the sort of. There's just no, there's just no like melody or like there's no space for the for a vocal sound <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess you probably you are you are sort of filling out the yeah the, the frequency ranges o o on all sides. Yeah. Um, w with you know maybe not vocalist, but is is producing quite a solitary thing, or you know it's obviously you kind of collaborate with people and you have your sort of peers around. When you get into the studio, do you go with other people or do you go on your own? Is it headphones on in the house or what's what's your kind of environment when you step up to logic so i've never had any like equipment i don't have monitors like i've always done stuff in potentially like in headphones at home nowadays like i don't make any music at home i've just got that studio share which i've got like one or two days a week maximum um so you quick keep it quite refined, like this is my music time. Yeah, I'm going in. Uh, it's like going to the gym or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but why yeah, I think that the, har the hardware thing. I think we've spoken about that as well. Like you know, I've, I've never had any hardware or used any, so maybe that's something that, like I I don't think I'm anywhere near as developed a producer as like I'd want to be. You know, like imagine if I spent a lot of time with some synths or some drum machines and just did that for a while and like developed a whole new kind of sound palette um but yeah you can is, it is it something you want to get into potentially but i've got <laughs> i've got go back to the tweet <laughs> <laughs> i've got i've got my sound i've got I'll my formula <laughs> i've got my sound i'll yeah. stick to i'll stick to yeah. it <laughs> um how are we doing for time anyone yeah should we do questions I was going to say should we do another project, but uh, yeah. But ten minutes till the end, or ten minutes? No, it's it's fine. Ten minutes sounds good, unless there's like th specific things that people would want to cover. I don't um, know. Well, we could maybe while you're opening a project, we could see if there's any questions in the crowd as well for Ahad, Hannah, Mina. <laughs> oh my God, I need to know the answer to this as well. This is my problem too. So. Mina just asked, I think it's a really good question. I think it's something that a lot of people have issues with. Yeah. Is um, turning loops uh, into actual arrangements and full tracks. So, so, so a lot of, um, a lot of times say like, like you saw, I made the basis of this track in another project at another tempo. Yeah. Mm. That was just sitting there um, doing nothing. So that like that will just be sitting there doing nothing, collecting dust, and then I might do that again and just make like one melody, uh, or or even like a half finished tune, and then when when I'm then I, then I'll just I'll be in the middle of making a track and I'll I'll be like oh okay, why don't I just try and import some of the things I've got lying around into this and see if they work? Yeah. Do you ever do that? So well, it's like actually, when we went in the studio together one thing that again 
I was envious of is I work in Ableton, so I, I work a lot in the um, session view, just play with l loops and ideas and just build and build and build and build. While when we moved the stems over to Logic, you straight away went into arrangement and intro, breakdown, you know, building your modulation for a build for a second drop and straight away got into it and I was like, damn, I really need to get in that yeah. mindset. Yeah, because basically what happens, I think, is you just end up not knowing the purpose of each element um, and it's, it's good to just start from scratch sometimes if you're not getting anywhere in one project. I think it's quite... It's quite overwhelming to try and finish a tune in, in one project. Um, if you open a new one and be like, right, let me just take the melody off from that last one and put it here and then build something else around it. I don't know if that's helpful. <laughs> that's kind of what I do. Yeah. Like th this so you're, you're basically you just p pulling stuff into other... Yeah, I think, I think that projects. was a good demonstration of that. You know, that, that other 160 tune... Like, never seen the light of day, but just that one element from it, I've used it, and it's gone on to do other things. Like yeah. So just, like, I tried doing this once, but, you know, the way you get sample libraries, you could just bounce out your own little sample library, like, if you've, if you've, li if you've got elements that you like, and just, just bounce them out and be like, put them into a folder, and just draw from them. Oh yeah, another thing I wanted to just go through as well quickly, or just mention, is... Uh, in quite a few of my tunes, I, ju I just put in, I don't know if any of you guys go on free sound. You ever been on free sound? No. So, so like, um, with, with my tracks, if everything starts sounding a little bit robotic and there isn't enough texture or just realness or organicness to it, sometimes I go to free sound. Um, and just download something or the other. Like, for example, in my unknown T edit, there's a coin drop. So what is free sound? It's like so it's, it's like, a, it's like, a, like you, you can just put anything on there. Yeah, so anyone can just put stuff on there and it's like, it's royalty free. Right. Or, or most of it is royalty free. Yeah. Uh, this might come out really loud. So yeah. I'll I'll take that and maybe just spread it out to four bars and it will just add some additional like texture. texture. Yeah. Yeah. Um so that that's one of the source of my samples and then I use splice as well. Um but yeah, I think that's mainly it these days. Yeah. And nice. and, and just stuff I've had for years. So like the <laughs> the Urban Fire <laughs> library that for some some reason someone gave me and, and it's just worked. <laughs> yeah. Is there any more uh, questions in the crowd? Um, that person at the back, sorry, I can't see you. So he's asked, um, do you use the samples all from one sample pack? Are you happy to mix and go to loads of different places for your sample sources? Yeah, I, I think um, I wouldn't just get one pack and then use that to make a tune. Like I, th I, th I don't think it would sound unique. Um, I would more so think of what it is that I want and usually search for that on Splice or, or wherever or online and just be like, oh, I need like a hat and just like go to hats or wha wha whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Would, uh, yeah. I've got a question because I know it's something that, you you know, it's everything's so percussion based. Um, what's your approach with melodies? I, I'm honestly just not very good at melodies. And so how do you sort of overcome that or you just... You know, is, uh, there, is there a way that you, like, right, I need to get, get an idea out? And I'll, I'll either just use a sample and, and stretch it in a way that it doesn't, it's not recognisable from its previous form. Yeah. Um, or, um, what else can I do? You was, like, humming stuff out when, and, uh, when we were in the studio together. Yeah, so I think, Which like, Which is something bass, I actually saw Skr lines. Skrillex do on his... One of his Twitch streams. He's yeah, like I think yeah, a lot of people do that. Like, sing what you think is gonna work in your head and try and recreate that. But um, like um, for bass lines, uh, a lot of times I use ES2, which is again the uh, it's just the inbuilt uh, synthesizer, um, but and then just layer them. Yeah, so this is one I ended up using in another track. Right. So 
uh, another track off my EP. Uh, you spaceship. Re you reuse the bass line for. Yeah, or or I would have just tried. I would have just been like, oh, this tune needs a bass line. Grabbed it from the other project, tried it. It hasn't worked, so I've just left it. Um, but yeah, with 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 bass lines, I always you do like three layers, um, and and just. Uh, and are you EQing them so that they're not clashing with each other? Yeah, and just putting different processing on each of them. Can we see an example of how you how you process your bass line? Uh, yeah, you can see or what plugins are in it. Yeah, I mean, there isn't anything insane in terms of plugins on here. There's Bit Crusher, um, CLA bass again, that CLA plugin. Um, but it's more just the la the layers and just like isolating them from each other and. It's mainly, sometimes I think it's the top end of the bass that really has the most impact. Yeah, that's what and people... And, and the, the, the character of that top end. Yeah. Um, any more questions? No? Okay. I think we'll wrap it up then. I hope uh, that was useful. <laughs> I don't know, I was just waffling on. It? <laughs> no, I, I think it was really useful. Uh, shout to Ahada Dream. Um, shout Big to up. make some noise for Raj. 